day so far. The President at 9 o'clock this morning attended the APEC Business Advisory Council Dialogue. This is where he and other world leaders spoke to uh, CEOs and high-ranking business officials from different countries. Um, is showing the best side of the Philippines in an effort to attract more investments to come into the Philippines. Uh, as we said before, the mission here uh, to a large part is to continue to attract more investors to the country so that they can create jobs. What do you mean to speech to the President this morning? Well, in general, I, I wasn't there. Uh, by the way, the uh, meeting this morning was, he was accompanied by Foreign Secretary Del Rosario and sustained growth, not just in the Philippines, but in other countries uh, in the region. We have very stable macroeconomic fundamentals, low inflation, low interest rates, steady growth. So that's been our general pitch. What was the reaction of President Aquino? The president remained calm throughout uh, as he was walking into a number of people claiming to be journalists from Hong Kong. Uh, Indonesian security deemed it to be accepted. The plenary, we were not aware of what exactly happened until afterwards when he was uh, telling us what happened. Um, but, but as you know, he was delivering his remarks and uh, he got a pretty good reception from the international business community. So it's not an issue that we want to make uh, too much of a big deal out of. I was asked this morning by a number of uh, foreign wire services uh, to react to that, and I will share with you my reaction. Um, this is what I said. As a former journalist, I know what it's like to aggressively question a sub-action. And, you know, we're all from the same industry. You know how it is when you ask aggressive questions. Yeah. There's a line that can be crossed. And, and the, the assessment of the security uh, a threat when somebody took an appropriate action. Pero, uh, beside, uh, let's say, kapusin natin issue regarding the, the way it was asked, uh, how would the president would have asked? What would have been the answer? I don't question? know. I don't know. I think that's an issue that's been settled. Um, you can ask him later tonight. I don't want to anticipate what the president will say. I know you will have a chance to talk to him directly. So that's an issue best answered by the president. Sure, it's been suggested that the Philippines had something to do with the reputation of the journalists. Um, no. no, we are not the organizing committee here. We don't call the shots. We are guests. Yeah. One lawmaker from Hong yeah. Kong was quoted as saying uh, the Philippines exerted pressure yeah. on the organizers. He's in Hong Kong. So where is he getting his information? So I think we are actually going That's it. I'm wondering where he got his information given that he's in Hong Kong. <laughs> I, he did not appear to have been disturbed by it. He went on with his activities. I demand to apologize to the people of Hong Kong. But that was rather far. Uh, I think there's video. Yeah, yes. I hope that it's not edited video, but there's some video out there that shows exactly what happened. So I think yes. the public can judge based on what they saw. I hope they're able to see an unedited video because I've seen one or two clips mm -hmm. and they appear to have been edited. So mm -hmm. let's, I mean, it's easy for people to make a judgment. There were many cameras there. So, um, I won't second guess the actions of the Indonesian authorities <coughs> that we're checking. So what does the palace think of uh, these journalists? <coughs> Your question suggests the answer. I won't want to say more about that. I mean, let's get back to the issues. This is APEC. It's a, it's a number of world leaders at a regular gathering, and they're talking about ways to um, sustain economic growth, to make it more inclusive. Uh, and, and that's why the president has been actively participating in this, because the theme is inclusive growth. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we're pursuing very aggressively. Um, and we're proud of being acknowledged. Sir, China would be the visa B participation in that uh, summit, is there next year? Well, we've always attended APEC summits. Um, I don't see any reason. <coughs> Let's not speculate Muna, about what might happen. Before that, we have to be in April 2014 for the turnover of the chairmanship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, uh, what's the question? <laughs> but we have, um, don't you think we have to be there? Really? You know, that's a question that will be answered at a later date by the things we've had with China for the last few years. We always want to take the long view of that relationship. Every relationship between countries 
has its ups and downs, and uh, nobody wants a deterioration to the point where it's going to affect our own national interest. Are we getting the impression, sir, there? I think I think as both countries work to further their national interest, then there should be some common ground for us to to discuss issues uh, and to work around them. Speaking of uh, organizing the effect, should you agree that we need the Let's wait until it's finished. I mean, we're in the middle of it. Uh, we have certainly been watching and talking to them and seeing where they're having difficulty and where they're having an easy time. Uh, and we look forward to learning from their experience. Um, and and uh, we think that uh, we'll be, we hope that we'll be able to uh, at least match the performance of the Indonesians. So we know what have we learned from the from the way. From my point of view, because I'm only looking at the media preparations, I think a couple of logistical concerns that have been raised, uh, we can learn from that. They've certainly learned from previous uh, experiences. So, um, yeah, just we can learn a lot of facilities. So they're, they're doing their best to make it easy for you guys to do their job, and you can rest assured that we will do our best also. In terms of, for example, why, why should uh, these investors go to the Philippines and not Indonesia, not Vietnam? You know, there's a lot of money to go around. And we're not necessarily competing with the other country to come to us because it's a good place to be. If you talk to think tanks and uh, financial institutions, they'll tell you that what's attractive about the Philippines is what I mentioned earlier macroeconomic stability, low inflation, low interest rates, steady growth. Uh, infrastructure that, while certainly needs improvement, is, is getting better. Um, and the other thing is political stability. There is relatively good progress in political reform. Uh, we have a president that is popular, that has the support of the public, that continues to do. I've been talking over the last several weeks, and even yesterday, with uh, various people from the international business community uh, and then this is what they're telling me, and I'm sharing it with you, that, that they like the macroeconomic and the political stability that they see. They like it enough to, to get in there. Yeah. And for example, we compare ourselves to Thailand. It's been a long infrastructure. So would the competition be tough in terms of income, for example? Well, look at it this way. Because our infrastructure needs are probably a system, ours still needs developing. So in terms of the potential market that we have, for, for um, infrastructure projects, there's more there. Um, it doesn't need as much upgrading as maintenance, as much maintenance. So there's potentials in the Philippines because we have a greater need for infrastructure. Domestic issues being raised against the person. Back home. Because do these issues affect at all the way we present ourselves to the international community? Or should we not just bother with these domestic issues? No, uh, I don't think it has affected the way we present ourselves or the way the international community sees us. Um, to some extent, distance gives you uh, actors in the political field. And that uh, as long as the president stays the course, which he is, then this will all redound to the benefit of the Philippines, both economically and politically. And haven't they expressed concerns about security concerns? At least not while I've been here. How is the president assuring them that there won't be any security issues? Chairman, it hasn't even been asked, so uh, I don't feel the third meetings. Uh, just to go on the record, Australia will not be here now. I understand it's going to be at the ASEAN summit in Brunei, on the sidelines of ASEAN. As you know, the ASEAN summit includes countries from outside the ASEAN plus three, the ASEAN plus plus, plus system. So many of them will be there. And uh, that meeting with uh, Prime Minister Abbott will take place in Brunei. Most of the people who are here may be there, so we don't know exactly where it will be, but when they're confirmed, I will let you know. Can you mention at least the countries that we're working with? Uh, let's leave that to BFA. At this point, I'm not uh, comfortable saying, not because it's a big secret, but because there are certain protocols that people want to follow. Mm. Sir, what was the first? No.
lot of um, casual but fruitful discussions with leaders of the business community. The Aid Back Dinner is really a chance for leaders. They're always uh, useful, both to the government and to, and to the private sector. <coughs> So one of the primary recommendations of APAC was for um, APEC economies to increase connectivity. Yeah. Was there any discussion on that with the president? I understand there have been many discussions of that on the ministerial level. Uh, the president may discuss those in broad strokes, but a lot of the actual mechanics and the details of that are being discussed by ministers and uh, sub-ministers on, the, on their level. Um, Under Secretary Czech Kristoval, who was here before the president. Dark forces in the region in terms of having more potential for growth than what is expected. I think what happened to us in terms of the perception of, of the international community was people in the beginning weren't paying attention, weren't paying too much attention to the Philippine reforms. The promises were actually being fulfilled and they suddenly stood up and took notice Hey, this guy in the Philippines who promised reform two years ago was actually serious and he's actually succeeding in these reforms. The reason why dark for great, and I think to a large extent, the president has exceeded the expectations, not just of, um, of our citizens, but also of the international community. Hence the term, I think, dark horse. But I think as expectations increase for the Philippines, we will be fine in terms of potential. I'm very proud that people think that the Philippines has a lot of potential. We should all be working together to fulfill that potential. It's because Senator Jokar Arroyo is saying that the president's popularity uh, doesn't give him a license to dictate on the budget. The budget is submitted to Congress by tradition and by law, by the executive. Congress goes through it and deliberates through it, and then it, that's been the process for us. So I don't understand what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. The Philippines is a democratic country, and it's become even more democratic under President Aquino. Sir, no, how uh, they defended the action of the three reporters. They said that uh, it's because the Philippines has yet to give a satisfactory answer as to why eight Hong Kong tourists were killed in that. I think we have answered that question many times. Asked or whether she resigned, um, but some, you know, sometimes it's time for people to move on. And let's just leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Has the president met first before he? Maybe it's better to ask uh, in Manila. Secretary of the Chair, I understand, doing a briefing. He'd be more able to answer that. Mm -hmm.